Hey all, thanks for joining us here today. This is another installment of the RC Powers Flight School. For more information on RC Powers, check out the links in the sidebar. Today's topic is stalls. This is one of the questions I get asked the most. What's a stall? How do you stop a stall? What makes a stall happen? Let's talk about stalls today. We're going to be using a couple different airplanes. I have the RC Powers Extra 300 here, and I have the Hawk Sky. Uh, different planes stall differently, so I'm going to show you stalls and recoveries in two different planes. Stalls are caused by angle of attack. They're not caused by airspeed. They're not caused by who knows what. They're caused by angle of attack. So if a plane is traveling from left to right, it's the angle of the wing to that relative direction that causes it to stall. This would be a zero angle of attack. This would be a 45 degree angle of attack. This would be a 90 degree angle of attack. When does a wing stall? A flat foamy wing will stall at about 10 degrees angle of attack. I know y'all are saying, hey, I've seen Dave fly his planes like this. That is flight beyond the stall and it's for a different discussion. Wings stall at about a 10 degree angle of attack. It's not very much. All right, let's take the extra 300 up and uh, see what it looks like when it stalls. All right, so we'll get this plane to stall, reduce its throttle, give it elevator pressure until it stalls right there. There it is, fully stalled. Break the stall and then the airplane will fly. All right, we're going to bring this around. I'm going to try to get it a little closer so I don't have to worry about those trees as it stalls. He will reduce throttle, and I'll start increasing the angle of attack until it stalls right there. That is fully stalled. That plane is fully stalled and coming down. Now to recover, all I have to do is release the elevator, and it starts to fly again. Give it throttle, and away I go. All right, let's take our Hawks guy up and see what it looks like when it stalls. All right, we've got our hawk sky up here. We're going to show it, demonstrate another stall. Because this wing has so has so much lift, when you stall it, <laughs> it quickly just plummets to the ground like a rock. So I'm going to reduce the throttle, slowly increase the angle of attack until it stalls right there, and it is just plummeting to the ground. Full back elevator. I recover, and now the plane flies nice and gentle. I still haven't given it any throttle. All I've re done is reduce the back elevator pressure. It's still flying because it's not stalled. Now we'll give it throttle and away we go. Right, we're gonna bring our Hawk Sky around for another stall. Now in this stall, you'll notice I start talking really fast because it just plummets to the ground. I don't have a whole lot of time to do much explaining. We're gonna reduce the throttle to zero. I start increasing the angle of attack until it stalls right there. Boom, and it plummets. I reduce the elevator and I recover. Recover. As soon as I break that stall, all I have to do is pitch the plane to the horizon and it flies. That's no throttle. I give it throttle again now and away I fly. You can see how long it'll fly close to the ground without any throttle, but as soon as it stalls, that plane is going into the ground. Ready for another one? Yep. All right. Let's reduce our throttle to zero and I slowly start increasing my angle of attack until it stalls right about there. Boom! It's going to plummet. There it goes. I recover, fly my airplane. And that's just nothing. I didn't do anything there except release the back elevator pressure. I still haven't done anything. Now I'll give it some throttle and actually fly it. Whoa, I got a glitch out there. Glitch, 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 glitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was a little hairy. Apparently, they've got some internet over by that uh, barn or something. All right, we're going to do one more for you, and then we'll switch airplanes. All right, let's bring our airplane around. We're going to reduce our throttle to zero. I'm going to try to hold the stall a little bit longer for you here this time. Get a little bit more altitude. I'm, hold, I'm increasing that angle of attack, and boom, there it stalls. And it just, that's a spin. This plane wants to spin when it stalls. I break the stall, and then I just let it fly, nice and gentle. I haven't given it any additional elevator input here at all. In fact, I've given it almost none, no input at all. I gave it a little bit of aileron there to turn it towards us, but that was it. And that's the Hawks guy stalling. Let's go check out the extra 300. Let's see another one. We'll get it up here. The stalls on this are very, very docile. It doesn't want to spin like the Hawks guy did. All right, so I reduce the throttle, increase the angle of attack until it stalls right there. It is now stalled. That is a fully stalled wing. And it just gently flows to the ground. This, this just doesn't rip away from us because there isn't as much of a uh, lift gradient. I break the stall to recover. I gave it throttle because I was close to that uh, that wall over there. I didn't want to hit it. Let's see how the plane reacts to throttle during a stall. All right. 
So I'm going to stall the airplane here. It's fully stalled. I'm going to slowly increase the throttle. The plane is still stalled. It's still stalled. You can see it wants to get goofy now that the uh, now that I've applied throttle. It gets very squishy in the air. I don't have much control over it. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the angle of attack and fly away. I'm going to do one more example here of what happens as you slowly increase throttle during a stall. The stall doesn't recover. The airplane simply starts having adverse, uh, adverse control effects. So here it is. It's stalled. I'm just adding throttle. I got more throttle there, more throttle. You see, it's just pitching further up into the air. But my control over it, I'm not trying to turn that plane. It's getting crazy. That is now full throttle in a stall. It is, it is goofy as heck. <laughs> and now I'm going to simply reduce the, ele the angle of attack. All I did was let go of the elevator. I have done no other controls other than to let go of the elevator here. And it has regained flight. Reduce the angle of attack and the plane will fly. It's not throttle. It's not airspeed. It's angle of attack. Ah, let's do one more. All right, we'll do one more here. I reduce to zero. I stall it. And now I'm going to give it rudder. That's what causes one wing to stall more than the other. Break the stall and it flies. I broke the stall really close to the ground. I just intended to land it out there because my battery is dead. But once you break the stall, everything stops. The spin stops. The adverse pitch on the hawk sky stops. Break the stall. We'll talk in a second about how you do that. All right, so now we've seen the hawk sky stall. We've seen the extra 300 stall. We've seen me recover the stalls. So the question many of you are asking is, what do you mean when you say break the stall? Well, let's talk about that. What caused the stall was angle of attack. So I've got my elevator fully deflected here. I'm pushing that angle of attack to my relative direction up, and that angle of attack causes the plane to stall. So to break this stall, all I need to do is reduce the elevator pressure, the angle of attack will decrease, and the plane will start to fly. It really is as simple as that. Let go of that elevator, that plane will immediately start to fly. So when you saw me stall the hawk sky, it would stall, and then it would just go super crazy. It'd start to spin around, dive towards the ground. Why does the hawk sky do that? Well, the reason is that this wing is a fairly efficient wing that produces lift. <laughs> uh, amazingly, un unlike a flat wing, which produces lift only from angle of attack, this wing will produce lift at a zero angle of attack. So because it's producing so much lift, when that stall happens and the lift goes away, the effect is dramatic. With wings that produce a lot of lift, you can get what's called unbalanced lift during uh, in a stall. The wings are stalling unevenly. One wing is stalling first. If the left wing stalls first, when it stalls, it'll dramatically pitch away because it's no longer producing lift. The right wing is producing lift and wants to help roll it as well. So when it, when it stalls, the nose will fall down, one wing will stall, and it'll start that spiraling down towards the ground. To stop that, you simply stop the stall, release the elevator, and the plane will want to fly all by itself. Hey, if you're wondering why I'm doing the rest of this discussion without the motor on the extra 300, I had a neighbor come by that wanted to see this fly. I've said in other videos just how much control authority this thing has. I gave it full elevator at one point, and I'm not kidding you, full elevator in the air and the motor <laughs> flew off. I never would have thought that would happen. Full elevator deflection was enough to rip the motor off this plane. This plane is absolutely insane in the air. Let's review here again what we were talking about. Airplane stall from angle of attack. Not from airspeed or anything else, they stall from angle of attack. These planes stall at about a 10 degree angle of attack. Usually this occurs when somebody has the elevator fully extended and they're forcing the nose of that plane in the air. Adding more power doesn't break the stall, reducing the angle of attack does. Simply reduce the, the elevator pressure, the nose will pitch down, the angle of attack will reduce and the plane will fly. If you've got any more questions about this, drop me a note over at rcpowers.com. I've got a link in the sidebar. By the way, this is a great plane. This is an RC Powers Extra 300. It's a free PDF. Go to rcpowers.com, check it out. And remember, if you're flying this at full throttle with full deflections, you might just rip off your motor. We'll see you all next time. That's about what it did.